In this lesson, I am going to discuss how to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. In our previous lecture, we studied how to solve a quadratic equation using factoring. However, what will happen if the non-zero side is not factorable? If that is the case, we will now use the quadratic formula. But before we use that, let us derive where did this quadratic formula came from. Let us recall that if we have a quadratic equation, it is of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c. We will use completing the squares to solve for x. What is the first step? We isolate the constant. Since the coefficient of x squared is not equal to 1, what do we need to do? We have to divide both sides by a first. We now get x squared plus b over a x is equal to negative c over a. And then, we will now proceed with our completing the square. What will we add to both sides of the equation? Copy the coefficient of x, which is b over a, and divide that by 2. What is that? b over 2a, and you square it over 2a squared. The left hand side is now equal to the square of x. This is plus, so this is plus, and then copy b over 2a. This right hand side is negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. I now simplify this expression as 4a squared. The LCD is 4a squared. And the numerator is going to be negative 4ac. And then this is b squared. Using the square root property, I will remove the square here by getting plus or minus square root of this expression. We now have x plus b over 2a is equal to plus or minus the square root of, I will write it as b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Take note that when you get the square root of numerator and denominator, the denominator will just become 2a, correct? So I have plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. Therefore, to solve for x, I transpose negative b over 2a. Since you now have the same denominator 2a, we now get negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. And this is your quadratic formula. So as you can see, now that we know the quadratic formula, there is no need for us to use completing the squares. Why? When we derive the quadratic formula, we just used completing the squares. Here are the steps in using the quadratic formula. So just like with solving by factoring, you have to set one side equal to zero first because remember that you are starting with the equation of this form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Next, you identify the constants a, b, and c. Remember that a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is your constant. So for example, you're given 3 minus 2x minus x squared equals 0. So don't just say that a is 3, negative 2, and then negative 1. What is your a here? The coefficient of x squared, which is negative 1. Your b is the coefficient of x, which is negative 2, and your c is equal to 3. And once you have identified your a, b, and c, you can now substitute the values in your formula and calculate. So for example, 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 is equal to 0. Let us solve this using the quadratic formula. One side is already equal to 0, so we are already good. Our a is... 2, our b is negative 3, our c is 4. 
quadratic formula, you have to write it over and over again so that you will be able to memorize it. This is equal to negative b is now 3 plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a is 2 and our c is 4 all over 2 times 2. This is 9 minus 32 all over 4. So that's 3 plus or minus square root of 21 all over 4. Those are the solutions. For next example, times quantity 2x plus 3 equals 1. First step, set one side is equal to 0. And remember that we have to write it in this form. So one side is equal to 0 and the terms are expanded in this way. Where you can see your x squared, your x, and your constant. So I will distribute this first. I have 2x squared plus 3x equals 1. And then one side should be equal to 0. A is 2. Our B is 3 and our C is negative 1. Put values in our formula. I have negative 3 plus or minus square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times your A is 2. Your C is negative 1 all over 2 times 2. What is that? We have negative 3 plus or minus. This is 9 plus 8. So that's 17 all over 4. Those are your solutions. Again, plus 3x minus 1 equals 0 cannot be factored using factoring method because this expression is not factorable. You really have to make use of the quadratic formula. In the next example, we have 9x squared minus 37 equals 6x. First step, one side should be equal to 0. Goal is to always write it of this form. Do not forget. I have 9x squared minus 6x minus 37 is equal to 0. 9b is negative 6 and c is negative 37. So our x is 6 plus or minus our b squared is 6 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times 9. This is equal to 6 plus or minus square root of 6 squared is 36, and then this is going to be plus 9 times 4 is 36 times 37 is 1,332 all over 18. So this is 6 plus or minus square root of 36 plus 1,332 is 1,368 all over 18, 6, plus or minus 6, square root of 38. You can use your calculators for that. Take note that I can factor out my 6, correct? Then I'm left with 1, plus or minus, square root of 38, all over 18. Hence, I can cancel 6 and 18 here. It will become so therefore, our x is 1 plus or minus square root of 38 all over 30. For our next example, we want to solve the equation z plus 6 squared is equal to negative 2z. Don't be scared that this is now z. These are just variables. It can be x, it can be z, it can be t, it can be anything. What is our goal here? We want to write it in this form. az squared plus bz plus c. It just so happens that our variable is now no longer x, 
It's called Z. That's okay. How do we go to this form? First, let me get the square of z plus 6 so that I can have my z squared term and my z terms and my constant. The square of z plus 6 is square the first term. This is plus, so this is going to be plus as well. 2 times this product. So we have 12z plus the square of the last term, which is 36. Is equal to negative 2z. One side must be equal to 0. So let me transpose that. When I transpose that, it will now become 12z plus 2z. So it will be 14z plus 36. This is going to be equal to 0. Therefore, my a is 1, b is 14, and c is equal to 36. I will now write the quadratic formula as z, not x, because our variable here is z. But it's still going to be equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we have negative 14 plus or minus 14 squared minus 4 times 1 times c all over 2 times 1. 14 squared is 196 minus 36 times 4 is equal to 144 all over 2. That is negative 14 plus or minus square root of 52 all over 2. Square root of 52 can be simplified to 2 square root of 13 because 52 is equal to 13 times 4. So when you get the square root, the 2 will come out. Divide this by 2. And take note that we can now factor out your 2 here because you have 14 and 2 have 2 negative 7 plus or minus square root of 13 all over 2. And this gets cancelled out. So we get z is equal to negative 7 plus or minus square root of 13. Next, we are going to talk about the discriminant. Let us recall your quadratic formula. We have this. Now, let's take a look at this expression inside your square root sign. Here, b squared minus 4ac. It turns out that just by knowing this one, it will help us determine the nature of our roots. Let me first define the discriminant properly. If you have a quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, that expression inside your square root sign, b squared minus 4ac, is your discriminant. This discriminant tells us whether the solutions are real numbers or complex numbers and how many solutions of each type without solving for x. So for example, if the value of our discriminant is greater than 0, we have two real solutions. Again, let me just write my quadratic formula here. In our previous examples, we have seen that if b squared minus 4ac is positive, we will always get two real solutions. Next, what will happen if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0? Then this will be 0 and therefore your x is just going to be negative b over 2a. So that means that you have one real solution. What if you have b squared minus 4ac less than 0? You always have to go back to the quadratic formula because if this thing over here is a negative number, let's say you have negative 4 here. Just for example, what will happen? The square root of negative 4 is not a real number, so that's why no real solution. But if you want to include the imaginary numbers, what will be your answers here? It will be negative b plus or minus... 2i, correct? So you still have two solutions, but in this case, they will now become imaginary. 
Let us use what we have learned to find the nature of the solutions to the following quadratic equations. First, we have x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. Let us compute for its b squared minus 4ac. That is equal to your b is 4 minus 4, your a is 1, and your c is 4. So it's 16 minus 16, which is equal to 0. So therefore, if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, what kind of solutions do we have? We have one real solution. Next, let's have 8x squared plus 14x equals negative 3. Let's first write it where one side is equal to 0 so that we can get our a, b, and c. So therefore, our b squared minus 4ac is equal to 14 squared minus 4 times 8 times 3. This is 196 minus, and that is equal to 100. b squared minus 4ac is positive, so therefore we have two real solutions. Next, let's have 3x squared plus 15 equals 10x. So similarly, we write it in this form. Set one side to 0. And therefore, our b squared minus 4ac is equal to our b is negative 10 and then square it minus 4 times 3 times positive 15. So we get 100 minus 180. Hence, this is negative 80, which is less than 0. Therefore, we have no real solutions or you can also say we have two imaginary solutions.